This talk is an overview of antidepressant medications. I'll teach you about the different antidepressants by pointing out some of the key differences between them. Before getting into the talk, there are a few big picture principles that I want to outline. First, the principle of equivalent efficacy. Current evidence does not show any clear differences in efficacy between different antidepressants in treating depression. Therefore, the decision regarding which antidepressant to use depends largely on which will be best tolerated by the patient. Second, the principle of delayed efficacy. Antidepressants generally require four to six weeks of daily dosing to reach maximum efficacy, though there are some exceptions to this. Third, the principle of multiple indications. Antidepressants have numerous indications in addition to depression, including those listed here. Finally, the principle of side effects. All antidepressants carry the risk of side effects, such as those listed here. Now, let's discuss the key differences between antidepressants to help you choose which one to use for a particular patient. The classes of antidepressants include SSRIs, SNRIs, atypicals, tricyclics, MAOIs, and serotonin modulators. Starting with the SSRIs, escitalopram is generally going to be your first choice based on its favorable side effect and tolerability profile, and that it typically does not interact with other drugs, as it is only a weak CYP inhibitor. For most purposes, escitalopram is superior to citalopram. For example, citalopram has a higher risk of QT prolongation. Sertraline also has few drug interactions. And for this reason, as well as the fact that it has a lower risk of QT prolongation, it is the preferred antidepressant in cardiac disease. Fluoxetine is unique for its long half-life, which allows it to auto-taper and limits the risk of serotonin withdrawal. However, it is a strong CYP inhibitor therefore having many drug interactions. Paroxetine is an older SSRI with worse side effects and more drug interactions than the others. Therefore, it should generally be avoided. Fluvoxamine is not FDA indicated for MDD, but it is for OCD, so it may be a second line choice for OCD. I know that this is a lot of information, so let me highlight the key differences. Escitalopram is first line in most cases. Citalopram causes QT prolongation, Sertraline is preferred in cardiac disease. Fluoxetine has a long half-life. Paroxetine should be avoided in most cases. And fluvoxamine is specifically indicated for OCD. Let's move on to the SNRIs. Venlafaxine and duloxetine both have several secondary indications, including diabetic neuropathy, migraine prophylaxis, musculoskeletal pain, and other kinds of pain. Venlafaxine is notorious for its difficult withdrawal symptoms, though also has more indications for depression and anxiety than duloxetine. Generally, you should pick between SNRIs based on their secondary indications. For example, migraine prophylaxis for venlafaxine and musculoskeletal pain for duloxetine. Next are the atypicals. Bupropion is activating, meaning it tends to improve energy and motivation. It may also contribute to appetite suppression and weight loss. This is in contrast to mirtazapine, which is more sedating and may stimulate the appetite and cause weight gain. Bupropion is also notable for its lack of sexual side effects, its secondary indications for smoking cessation and ADHD, and that it lowers the seizure threshold. Therefore, bupropion is generally contraindicated in patients with seizure disorders, and eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia, in which weight loss can also lower the seizure threshold. Again, I want to highlight the contrast here between the activating effects of bupropion and the sedating effects of mirtazapine. The TCAs and MAOIs are older classes of antidepressants that are generally reserved as last-line treatments in modern psychiatric practice due to their difficult to tolerate and potentially lethal side effect profiles. For the TCAs, these are the TRI-Cs, or anticholinergic side effects, cardiac risk, and convulsion or seizure risk. For the MAOIs, these are serotonin syndrome and hypertensive crisis. However, in cases where other antidepressants have failed, it is sometimes worthwhile to try these medications. Finally, we have the serotonin modulators, a newer class of antidepressant favored for their low side effects. Unfortunately, at time of publishing this video, these medications remain difficult to afford for many patients. That's the end of this talk. I hope this helps when thinking about which antidepressant to try next. Always keep in mind the principles of equivalent efficacy, delayed efficacy, multiple indications, and side effects. Thank you.